Hello, we are in Naperville, Illinois, and we're going to be tuck pointing some stress cracks this morning. We got uh, one there that reaches um, to this address plaque, and then the next one will be up there. And then uh, we also have one here in the front entryway. We'll start from the bottom going to the top, so right there, so right there, it's that one joint that needs that brick to that brick right in between um, just separating a little bit maybe they didn't use any wall ties or something like that so we're gonna grind that out um, tuck point it but first I'm gonna show you guys how to properly mix your mortar I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube that are a little misleading and they don't use the right materials and I just want to give a different view on how to actually do it my personal opinion the way that I do it and the way that works and that blends in perfectly because with the other materials that you might buy at um, you know the big box stores they're not really gonna match perfectly so I'll show you here in a second of how I mix my mortar and where you can get it These are the tools that you are going to need. You are going to need some kind of hawk and then maybe a some kind of bucket scooper. And then you're gonna need different size trowels for whatever size you're gonna be using. Uh, so in this case, I might use something like this. Uh, this might be a half inch trowel. You know, I'll just find the right trowel for me. For me, I have all the trowels, but you need to make sure that you have the right size tool for the right size joint you're going to be tuck pointing. And then in some cases, in some different areas, you're going to get a joint like this. Now this is a concave joiner. Basically, it's going to just concave it in. It's gonna be a, more of a rounded joint. I think it looks a little nicer. It uh, It's just, it, it's a lot easier to, to work with actually. And then once you're done with that, you're gonna want, you're gonna want to get a nice brush. Now this brush is a little, older i've been using it for a little bit this is going to be a type n masonry cement it's called brick cement what i'll do here now is i have a measuring can you know any old coffee can stuff like that fill this coffee can up i'm gonna fill two of them up actually because we're going to be doing a two to one ratio mix and when tuck pointing i find that it's the best ratio to use it's a little more stickier a lot easier to stay on your child now if you put a little bit too much sand which you can go up to a four to one or even three to one. Um, it'll be, you know, falling off your trowel. It'll be a little harder to work with. Now when you're laying brick and you're using something like this trowel here, um, you're gonna be grabbing a lot more mortar. So the, the, the good thing with this is when you have a, a sandier mix, it'll be a lot easier to handle and it's not gonna stick to your trowel and everything will go a lot smoother. Tuck pointing, we generally like to stay two to one because you want it to stick to the trowel. You want it to be falling out. So level it off. Make sure everything's nice and measured. Okay. And then we'll go over to our masonry cement. And then we'll fill up one of these here. Got a couple more bags in the truck. Okay. So then we throw it in there like that. And then what I like to use, you can use a shovel, you can use, you know, whatever you like to mix this up. Bigger batches, it's gonna be a lot easier with this right here, this is a hoe. So what I'll do here is I'll mix this up dry first. Now once it's mixed dry, you're gonna have your water here. And in my case, I'm gonna use a little bit of accelerator just because it's a little colder out here now. You don't wanna be tuck pointing in uh, below below freezing temperatures, but I just like to speed the process up a little more. Throw this in there. Um, and it's gonna help it uh, set up a little faster, which will work out in my favor. Alrighty. So, a little bit at a time, I like to start with. Throw that right there for a second. Alrighty. A little bit at a time. 
and just work it. See, a little more. Good, work it. Okay, a little more. Just be very careful towards the end that you're not gonna overdo it here. Get all that dry stuff out of there because you don't want any kind of dry in there. Make this up real quick. You don't want it too soupy because then it'll smear all over the bread. Um, but this is how it should look here. Alrighty. Um, so what we're gonna be doing now, we're gonna set up the ladder in our first crack. We're gonna take this angle grinder here and then uh, start grinding away. Now this is a four and a half inch angle grinder and this is gonna be a four and a half inch tuck pointing blade. So it'll come out. Looks like we're doing good. We got water, we got power. Sometimes during the winter here, people like to shut off their water. So nothing, none of their pipes freeze or anything. Now, protective gear. That's um, a big thing, especially the glasses for me because you'll get one tiny little pebble in your eyes and you'll be out of commission for the rest of the day because it'll just bug you and annoy you for the whole day. So I got this uh, surgical mask here. I'm going to throw it on and we're going to get grinding here. Make sure you throw your brush on the ground just like that. Otherwise, you're not a real tuck pointer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't do that. So what you're going to want to do, just grab a little chunk. Start off at a, start off slow if you haven't done this before, please. And uh, oh, that's going to be a little too big for that joint. I'll go ahead to this joint here. Might need to switch off tools periodically if your joints are inconsistent. In this case, they are a little inconsistent, so I'll have to use a couple different joiners, which I don't normally do. But that's just the way she goes. Sometimes she goes, sometimes she doesn't. This time she goes. It's the way she goes. So. Okay. Again, if you're not to experience, don't try to go as fast as me. Take your time. Something that's gonna look something like this, how you guys are gonna do it. And again, I'm not, I don't wanna brag or anything. I'm not trying to say I'm the best tuck pointer out there, because I know I'm not. There's a lot more tuck pointers that I know that are a lot neater and a lot faster than I am. But I know at the end of the day, I can make a job look good. So we'll tuck point it flat here. And it looks like we're going to be striking it at a concave joint, actually. So tuck point it flat first and then let it set up for a second. And then we'll come back and strike it with our concave joiner. You know, it might look easy in the beginning when you're first watching me do it. But once you actually start doing it, it's not going to look too easy and you're like wow he was right yes i was right no i'm not always right Alrighty, i'll go like that get the excess mortar off or even you know little little music dance here but no just get a little uh, <laughs> get a little um Excess mortar off, you know, smooth them out real nice. It's gotta just take your time. That's really all it is. 
and then here at the bottom i just like to smooth that out with my finger just like that Alrighty, so we've waited um our time and it's time to brush so let me go over here and show you how you can tell when it's time to brush so you'll start to see something like this it's going to be a lot lighter than how it was and then these end pieces will just flip off stuff like that so how i'm going with my finger this is how it's going to the texture is going to be of the mortar um when it's you know dry it a little bit and you'll be able to brush now if you brush too early what you'll do is the mortar will still be wet and you'll smear it all over the brick that's not what you want so i've already done a little bit here and all i'm going to be doing is something like this you know just kind of work it keep on going get these end pieces here just kind of blend them in as much as you can as much as you can now another thing that i didn't tell you guys is i was talking to uh uh the customer real quick and i was basically telling him that the more meat that i can put onto this wall is going to be a lot better is and and what i mean by that is um we were going to do a concave struck joint how it is um now the mason before me that did some tuck pointing work on this crack over here um didn't do that he just went with a flat joint i just think that it's a little smarter to do that you're going to get a little bit more meat onto it now if i struck it it's going to be a less um thickness of new mortar that i'm putting into there Alrighty, so we're all done with the tuck pointing now I'm going to show you guys how to make your muriatic acid wash. So here we have muriatic acid. That's going to be used for any type of mason you're washing. You can get that at a Home Depot. It's going to be a 1 to 3 ratio. So it's going to be 1 part acid to 3 parts water. So what I'll go ahead and do then is take my gallon of acid, pour 1 cup into here, and then I'll take 3 cups of water, throw it into there. Wet the wall first so the acid is not absorbed into the mortar or the brick and then go back um, and spray your uh, acid solution onto the wall or onto the area that you've done work at until it stops fizzing, which is about 30 seconds or so. And then you take your water again and wash that off. Another thing to keep in mind too, is that if you're doing it by any kind of concrete, something on the ground, that you make sure that you want to um, saturate that ground with the water first before you start spraying the acid because you might get a little bit of overspray and the wind will carry it and then it'll hit the ground. It'll start having little, you know, patches of acid on there and another thing that you really got to watch out for that i had a problem this year that i never had a problem with before is when you're doing any kind of acid washing near copper flashing and i didn't know this up until i was at a job maybe about three four months ago actually on the other side of naperville i was doing some acid washing and the muriatic acid had some kind of um reaction with the copper with the copper roof with a copper flashing and it just turned it almost into a rainbow it was horrible so that cost me a little bit of money in order to to replace that so let's just say copper flashing is not cheap so just be very leery and just make sure before you do any type of washing that you saturate everything around you i'm talking plants concrete sidewalks asphalt flashing stuff like that and like i say once you do the acid it's gonna turn out really good you'll be really surprised on what acid can do for you it can clean everything up and just kind of blend everything perfectly and you'll be very very happy with what you'll what you'll come out with so take your time that's all i got to say is take your time <laughs> take your time follow the steps and make sure you're using the right material don't be using any of that uh pre stuff it doesn't come out right it doesn't come out with the right color and then as far as other colors just make sure that your you know trying to color match the best that you can because there's red color out there and then there's a chocolate color out there um, and then also a buff which is kind of a tan so just try to do your best as far as matching most of the time you're going to have a natural mortar color which is no color added just sand and cement and that's that it's pretty simple don't overthink it you can do it i'll see you next time